Hey guys, Jonathan here. I just wanted to take a quick minute to come to you guys with a video explaining what I think is really happening with Mercedes' new DAS, or dual axis steering system that we're hearing about from the Barcelona test. Um, there's been a lot of speculation that's come out that the uh, dual axis steering has something to do with trying to reduce rolling resistance by changing the toe um, or with tire heating. Uh, again, just to cover toe, that is the way the tires point together at the toe, just like the toes of your shoe or point apart. Um, when we're talking about toes with race cars, we're talking about hundreds of thousands of an inch or uh, I guess we'd convert to less than two millimeters um, across both front tires. So you can see that there's not a whole lot of difference that you would see between a half a millimeter, one millimeter, two millimeter. Whereas in the video, we can actually see quite a visual change of the tires pointing in and out that is beyond just trying to go from a standard racing toe out setting to a uh, front forward zero toe, low drag, low friction type setup. Something that you might see more towards a speed run and uh, drag racers even though they still have probably a little bit of toe for stability reasons because it really does uh, help keep the thing from being a featherless dart out there. Uh, addition for cornering purposes, when you start turning the wheel and rotate weight to that outside, if you had toe in, the outside tire would be pointing in more than the inside and that would then create kind of a dart to the inside. So it's generally a better feel for the drivers to have that just slight bit of toe out so that there's that little bit of forgiveness as the weight transfers to the outside. That being said, uh, what I think Mercedes is actually attempting to do is not anything to do with tire uh, temperatures or um, la making the tire last. You have camber that's making the tires, this. you only have the inside portion that's even on the ground on a straightaway anyway. I think what they're really trying to do is manipulate the airflow coming off of the tires. Um, Open wheel cars, open tires, open wheels spinning in the air is a disastrous type of aerodynamics, which is kind of crazy because some of the most advanced technology cars in the world use open wheels, but that's from a previous era that has been grandfathered in. It's not what engineers would, would choose if they had the option. Instead, they spend a lot of time and energy redirecting the air that comes off those tires to try to either grab it and steer it to where they want or uh, eliminate it from the car. You see a, a lot of barge boards that keep getting added on as the season goes on. You see um, the wing mirrors as they came along. All that stuff you have to look at is it's taking a lot of the air that is coming off of those spinning tires and trying to direct it in a way that's useful for the car. Um, I think in this instance, I tried to do a drawing to show that it's very, you know, not very good art, but um, it over-exaggerates the toe out and a toe in position. On the toe out position, you see that the tire, the air coming off of the tires is going to be pointed slightly more towards the car, which would, if you remember the colander effect from those colander blown diffusers, blown rear wings, things that we had, the, um, they you know, ended up outlawing that type of uh, um, uh, aerodynamic device in Formula One, but you know, as explained, like take a, a spoon and put it under a faucet and you'll see that the water doesn't just fall off the spoon that it actually wants to point back together at a different place. You've just moved it and used the shape of the spoon to move it where you want. Um, it's the same type of effect that they're going to be trying to uh, capitalize on with these tires. So with the tires pointing in towards the rear, so a towed out position, the air is going to be pointed more towards the car, which is going to, again, colander type effect, going to try to reattach to the car and will um, get with the car and make contact with the rear wing, giving downforce. Um, obviously, that's great for cornering. But when you get to the straights, you don't want downforce. We have the current DRS system that drops the rear wing out and it gives the ability for the rear wing to not collect air and you get reduced drag and you get a much faster straightaway speed. Um, they are, I, in my opinion, they're trying to do the exact same thing by towing in. You can see that again, this is very exaggerated to make a point, 
but you have air that comes off of the tire that then doesn't have a chance to reattach to the car or reattaches to the car farther back, meaning that it's not going to have as much chance to catch the uh, main portion of the wing. Um, to me, this makes the most sense. Uh, you know, there, there's a lot of emphasis that's been given to uh, the airflow coming off of the tires on Formula One cars for many years now. But that's we see as seasons develop, they add more and more little bits of carbon fiber in that area behind the rear wheel to try to direct it and make the most use of it. And I think Mercedes has found a way through probably testing in like a rolling ground plane uh, wind tunnel where the tires are actually spinning and throwing air off of it. They probably played with toe angles in, a, in something like that, maybe in computer simulations that I know they're very good now, and, and found a, the perfect toe angle, well, toe in angle, that actually spells the air off of the car and away from the car, reducing drag. This can even be uh, accentuated by brake ducts that grab air from the front and blow through the wheels. If they're going to scoop more air and blow it off the car um, to get it off of the car down the straightaway in a toe-in position, uh, it's going to give them a good aerodynamic advantage in a straight line. But when you get to the corner, you want that downforce back. He, Lewis or Valtteri will push the wheel in and it will go back to the standard toe-out position, which again gives good mechanical feel to the driver as well as then steers the air back onto the rear wing. So as you guys are, are watching the story for this unfold and see if it's going to remain legal or not, I wanted you to get a little bit more information than what's going on here, maybe a little bit more than just about tire wear, that this really could be like a double DRS type system. So I hope you've learned a little bit of something, have something more to consider. We'll see what uh, Mercedes actually comes out and, and says that's going on or what you know maybe Red Bull or Ferrari claims going on. I think we'll get to the bottom of, of what the actual effect is. I personally think that this is all to do with aerodynamics and um, there, there could be some, depending on the kingpin angles, which uh, I'm not gonna get into in this video, there can be some ride height changes that go on, but for my calculations for what standard kingpin angles are, this would actually go the opposite way. Um, it would lower the car a little bit in the front, which would add more wing to it. So again, without knowing what type of kingpin angles are actually running, I really have no way of knowing if the car is raising or lowering, but I do know that there's going to be an aerodynamic effect with that air spilling off of the tire and either reconnecting farther back and missing less of that, uh, hitting less of that rear wing or just detaching altogether. And I think that's what they're trying to do. Thanks for checking out the video. Hope you guys have a great day. I think we're in for a fantastic Formula One season. Take care.